Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm coming with today's scripture affirmation. Today, we're going to the beginning. We're going to go to Genesis, but we're looking in chapter 24 and have a word for us to stand by, to live by on today. You know, we know that um, when God tells us to do things, sometimes we procrastinate. Sometimes we keep putting it off. Sometimes we start and then we slow down because we get discouraged. Sometimes we start and we get excited because we see everything's falling in place. So we begin to think that we can rely relax and put things off and slow down. But I want to give us a word today that we find in Genesis 24 that really shows us how to be successful in the things that we were called to do. And when we look in this book, we look in this uh, particular excuse me, this particular chapter, we're looking at Abraham and his servant. And the Bible tells us in the first uh, verse, Abraham was old and well stricken in age and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. The second verse says, Abraham said to his oldest or his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And so I wanted to start there because he sends his servant on a journey and his servant agrees that he is going to go and find a wife for Abraham's son Isaac. We know this is very important because the promise of the of God's children, God's people comes through Abraham. Is Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and so Isaac um is you know the servant is sent to go get a wife for Isaac. Now this man is on a mission, he's made an agreement with Abraham, but he made it um uh, he made it making an oath to God, which is very important that we need to make sure sure that we recognize when we make an oath, when we make a promise that we need to know that we're making it to God. Sometimes people say they're walking in their calling. God called them to ministry or called them to do a certain thing. And they make a promise. They make a vow that they're going to go forward and do it. But then there's excuses. There's, there's procrastination. There's dragging out. There's, you know, and sometimes we need to be on board and stay on task and realize that time is at hand. And if we don't stay focused, sometimes we lose our focus totally. We never complete what it is we were supposed to do. We never see the manifestation. We never see ourselves walking in our calling. We never fulfill the vision. We never complete the dream. We never move out of the situation. We never move to the next level. We never accomplish our mission. And so what we learn from this servant is the Bible tells us that he begins to pray and he talks to God and he wants confirmation. Like he's like, um, well, when I find the woman, let me know because she will do X, Y, and Z. So when he, when he prays to God, when he begins on his journey, then he sees this once Y and Z, exactly what he asked of God, exactly what he said. So now that this is the, I don't want to go through the whole story, but it would bless you to read this whole chapter. And when he uh, approaches the woman, when he talks to the woman, and then he goes and talks to the family. And when he talks to them, it comes to a point where, yes, she's going to go with him. She's going to go and be Isaac's wife. But what I want us to focus on is when you look down, um, a little bit further down in verse 33, before he even told the family what had taken place, when he comes back to their house, they want to offer him a meal. But in verse 33, he said, it says, and there was set meat before him to eat. But he said, I will not eat until I have told my errand. And he said, speak on. And he goes on and tells why he's there. Now they offer him a meal, but he said, no, 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 I'm not going to stop and eat right now. I want to tell you why I came here. I want to tell you what my mission is. I want to tell you what my purpose for being here is. I don't want to stop and eat. I don't want to get distracted. I don't want to sit at the table and get caught up in an idle conversation. He said, before I do anything, I want to tell you why I'm here. We need to stay focused and on task. We need not to procrastinate, not to get distracted, not to get deterred from our purpose purpose. And then he goes on and tells the entire story about why he came there and how he had asked God to show him the right woman and how this woman, uh, Rebecca, had done exactly what it is that he had asked God about. And then when we go down, then we find out that it's agreed she'll go with him. And that's great and that's good. But then it tells us that then, <clears throat> excuse me, it 
came to pass in verse 52 that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshiped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and gold and raiment and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave to her brother and to her mother precious things. And they ate and drank. And he and the men that were with him tarried all night. And they rose up in the morning. He said, send me away unto my master. And her brother and her mother said, let the damsel abide with us a few days, at, at least, at least 10. After that, she can go. So now the servant is ready to go. He spent the night. He ate and drank with them. But now it's morning. He says, send me on my way. It's time for us to go. I came to accomplish this mission and we are ready to go. But then the brothers and the mother said, let her stay just 10 more days. You know, at least 10 more days and then you can go. But then his response is in verse 56, he said unto them, hinder me not. Seeing the Lord has prospered my way, send me away that I may go to my master. Listen, you know, it can be people that mean well. It can be situations that don't seem that bad, that distract and deter us and hinder us and slow us down. But we have got to be on task. Whatever it is you're supposed to be doing, whatever God has called you to do, whatever you're trying to accomplish, whatever goals you have, whatever is before you, you have to stay focused. You have to stay on the path. You have to stay on the journey. You can't let other people slow you down. You can't let things hinder your walk. You can't let them hinder your purpose. You can't let people people stop you from what it is you're trying to do. Some people are even doing something just trying to pray for somebody and somebody distracts them. You know, if you've ever been on your way to church, you got up, you said, I'm going to service today. But then somebody calls and tells you what, well, you know, can you just do this with me today? Can we just, you know, maybe we could just do this and then we we'll go next Sunday or we we'll go to Bible study or, you know, it's little things that we can't be faithful in the little things. We'll never make it in the larger things. If we can't overcome the little distractions, we'll never be able to overcome when the storms come and try to distract us. We have to stop procrastinating, especially when it's things that pertain to what God's will is for your life. So I came to encourage us today to stay focused, to stay on task, not to let anything or anyone hinder what it is that we were sent here to do, what it is we're purposed to do, whatever the goal is that we have, whatever the purpose is that we're walking in. Don't let anything hinder you. Don't get distracted. Don't get deterred. Don't lose your focus. Because when you begin to lose your focus, you begin to go in a spiral. It's just like somebody who's gone to church. They could have been going to church for months. They could have been going to church for years. But as soon as they missed that first Sunday, and then they missed that second week, and then they missed that third week, then they find that it's too hard for them to get back. They're fighting to get their way back because they've gotten comfortable. They got complacent. And sometimes we need to realize it's the little bitty distractions, things that seem like it's nothing, is something. So the enemy comes to distract and the enemy comes to delay. Listen, don't let anything delay what God is doing in you and what your purpose is. And don't allow anything or anyone to distract you. Stay focus. Keep your eyes fixed on the author and finisher of your faith. Father, it's in the name of Jesus that we come today thanking you for your word. Help us not to procrastinate. Help us not to make excuses as to why we can't do what you told us to do right now. Help us to stop, Lord God, putting off what you purpose for us. Help us, Lord God, not to let anything hinder us, nothing distract us. Help us to stay focused. Lord, with our mind stayed on you and our eyes fixed on Christ, order our steps, direct our path. Give us wisdom, confirmation, and guidance. Help us to be steadfast and movable and unshakable. Help us to abound in your work, Lord God, because we know that the work of the Lord is not in vain. So, Father, we surrender to you today. Help us to stay focused even today. Help us to walk in your will even right now, God. And so, Father, we thank you that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. We thank you for ordering our steps. Today, we acknowledge you in all of our ways, and you said you shall direct our path. We thank you and we praise you. We love and honor you, God, for who you are. We thank you for all that you've done, what you're doing and what you're about to do in the mighty matchless powerful name of Jesus, we pray and we say hallelujah and amen. I encourage you to stay focused today. Stay focused. Stay on the battlefield. Whatever you've been doing, whatever you're supposed to do, you've been putting off, procrastinating, waiting, making excuses. I'm not ready. I don't have enough money. I don't know enough people. Uh, you know, this happened, that happened, a distraction. You know, there's so much going on. I just can't. No, you have to stay focused. You have to endure. You have to be steadfast. You have to be immovable. Press into the things of God and stay steadfast. 
I encourage you to join us uh, for prayer and word every morning at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're up, call the number below. If you're on Facebook, come to my page, Pastor Tony Brooke Brown. We're on Facebook Live. We go into the presence of the Lord every morning. And I encourage you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't, if you want updates when messages are uploaded. And also share this message with somebody who's been procrastinating, somebody who's been making excuses, somebody who's been complacent, somebody who has just got comfortable, somebody who's sticking and familiar, somebody who needs to push forward. Share this message with somebody today. So go forward today. Don't forget to minister to somebody today. Pray with and for somebody today. Uh, preach the gospel to somebody who's unsaved. Minister to somebody who's backslidden. Be purposeful in your steps today. Do that which brings glory to God and which increases the kingdom. And so I pray that you have a blessed day in the Lord. I'll see you next time. God bless you.